Steve Merrill back here on Wager Talk TV with a big game breakdown for you on one of your national TV games on the FS1 Fox Sports 1 Network at 6.30 Eastern. A little bit of an early start, so don't miss this. 6.30 Eastern start tonight between St. John's and Xavier. And we're now in the heart of conference play, and we're also getting some second meetings, some revenge situations. And these are the best situations of all in college basketball. I love this time of the year, and that's why I've won consistently now for the past 28 years in college hoops when it comes to January and February, of course, which starts tomorrow. And this game qualifies in several different situations, and I think it's a good spot for Xavier for that reason. First of all, quality team. Yes, they're just 10-10 and 10 this season, but they're still a quality team. And they're coming off back-to-back -back losses, but both were road underdog losses as 9- and 11-point dogs at Creighton and UConn. So no shame in those defeats. And the last one was a blowout loss by over 30 points at UConn. So we should get a very focused spot back at home for Xavier. And then on top of that, they've also got the revenge motive from a 15-point loss at St. John's back on December 20th, a little bit over a month ago. Always like to dig into the box scores in these second meetings from the first meeting. And we definitely get a result in which the road team underperformed, which is often the case in college basketball. And I do expect a much better performance tonight, um, as is often the case also in modern college basketball. Three-point shooting made the difference in that game. Uh, St. John's 35%, Xavier just 19%. They were four for 21 from three-point range in that game, and that is one of the main reasons they got a 15-point loss handed to them. I expect them to shoot much better on the season. They're seven for 20, 35% on average. Um, St. John's also a weaker road team, as is often the case with many teams. St. John's a solid eight and two at home this year, just a 500 team away from home. So there's a lot of situational setups here which favors Xavier tonight. We'll check the Wager Talk live odd screen. We'll see that this line opened to minus one overnight. It's now up to minus one and a half, a little bit of money coming in on Xavier. Total's been bet up quite a bit, 154 and a half, all the way up now to 157. And I do think that makes sense. Um, these are two teams that prefer up-tempo basketball. Uh, both are in the top third in pace and tempo in the country. Uh, so once again, uh, Xavier in the revenge spot in what should be a high-scoring game is obvious by that move on the total. I think Xavier minus the one and a half gets the revenge and the straight up win tonight at 630 Eastern on Wednesday. Take a look at the big game breakdown here for today. Going to go to the Big 12 Baylor at Central Florida game open Baylor minus three, 139 and a half currently sitting in about that same spot. And going to look at this game under going to start here with the tempo and the defense Baylor currently the second slowest paced team in the big 12 only 63.7 possessions per 40 minutes central Florida they're the 11th in the 14 team league they only get 65.7 possessions so two very very ultra methodical offensive teams here um UCF known for their defense this season they own the eighth best defensive efficiency mark not in the big 12 but in the country that eight mark in the country is only fourth best in the Big 12 to show you how many good defenses there are in the Big 12 where efficiency is concerned. Um, best asset of the UCF defense this year, my from what I see is their uh, rim protection, the interior defense. They're the fourth best shot blocking team in the nation. Funnel everything to the middle, block shots. Baylor, number 68 in the country in defense, still a very good defense. They only allow 31.4 from beyond the arc this season that ranks almost top 50 in the country number 54 overall when you match these two up offense versus defense knowing already that it's going to be a pretty slow paced game central florida is one of the worst shooting teams in the nation they're dead last in big 12 games only hitting 39.6 from two point range and 28.7 from three so their offense against the Baylor defense you can't see a lot happening here a lot hasn't happened offensively for UCF and I saw a great line I think the earlier this morning looking into this game where it said don't expect any positive regression out of the UCF offense it is what it is for a long time now this season heading into February Baylor's main asset is their three-point shooting um, obviously, they're one of the best in the nation. But since Big 12 play started, and this is why conference play changes everything, they've shot 25% or less from beyond the arc in four of their six conference games. And again, I think they like the third best team in the country shooting threes overall from, uh, from back from November till now. So conference play does slow some things down as far as shooting is concerned. The only two teams that Baylor shot it well against in conference play where Texas and BYU, they own two of the three worst three-point defenses in the league. 
it's going to be hard for Baylor to get to the rim because, as I mentioned earlier, UCF blocks a lot of shots. They protect the rim. So it's hard to um, see where any real spurts or extensive offense is going to come from in this game. They're playing, these two combined, playing an extreme amount of regulation unders in league play. Uh, I think if you combine their 13 total Big 12 games played by these two teams, nine of them have gone under the number that we're looking at here today. Uh, for Baylor, they've been in three league road games. At the end of regulation against Oklahoma State, 60 to 60, only 120 points. At the end of regulation at K State, 54 to 54, only 108 points. They played a 148 point game at Texas, 75 to 73. The miracle is they did that on 59 possessions. The shooting was amazing in that game. They scored 120 points on 100 shots and had 28 free throws on top of that. So that's kind of a mirage where um, scoring is concerned for Baylor on the road in league. Texas Tempo and their shooting helped that game along. UCF has neither of those. So I think this game stays low here. Um, if we take a look at Central Florida real quick, seven Big 12 games, six of those have ended between 99 and 131 points. Just not a lot of scoring out of UCF. They hang their head on defense. I think you got a pair of slow tempo offenses. UCF support shooting team. Baylor's three-point shooting has been down in conference play. Each team needs this win, so defensive intensity should be up. I'm going to play it under. I thought 139 and a half was a little strong. I think she, um, a couple of spots even had 141s to start, but the true opener was 39 and a half. I think we stay under 139 and a half Baylor at Central Florida. Hey, it's Brian Leonard here at wagertalk.com. I'm going to use my big game breakdown today on a Wednesday, heading to the SEC, Florida at Kentucky. Uh, the Gators are 14 and 6 on the season, 4 and 3 in the SEC. They're only 1 and 3 straight up on the road, with every defeat coming by double digits. That's a concern going into this one. Uh, they're riding a three game winning streak heading into this contest, so they're feeling pretty good about themselves. Uh, when you take a look at the effective field goal percentages, their offensive effective field goal percentage is 51.6 compared to 48.4 defensively. Pretty good defensive team here in the Gators. What really jumps out when you take a look at what the Gators do is their offensive rebounding percentage. An amazing 40.1% offensive rebounding percentage. This team hits the offensive boards harder than just about anybody in college basketball. And that's something you always want to take into account is you get more than one shot at the basket when you're betting here on the Gators. Uh, Kentucky 15-4 on the year, 5-2 and two in conference. The Wildcats have suffered just one outright loss in this building, an 80-73 defeat to NC Wilmington, a game in which Kentucky was an 18-point favorite. Uh, they have an offensive effective field goal percentage of 56.7, defensively 48.6. So you've got the better shooting team in Kentucky, the better rebounding team in Florida in this one. But both teams have been solid all year, but we do have some concerns about the way the Gators have played on the road. As I mentioned, just one in three with all three losses being by double digits. Now, this number is slightly short in our regard. Uh, I've seen anywhere from five to six and a half. Uh, made it a little bit higher here on Kentucky, and that's where we're going here. Uh, the combination of Kentucky playing at home uh, which uh, a place they've only lost once, and a Florida team that's had some problems getting wins on the road. We'll lay it here with the Kentucky Wildcats as our big game breakdown for Wednesday. Steve Merrill back with a free college basketball play for you tonight on Wednesday, January the 31st. You know, it's the last day of January. February starts tomorrow. This is such a great time to be a college and pro basketball client. But don't forget the Super Bowl also still up in about a week and a half. So there's a little bit of football remaining. I'll have a huge Super Bowl report, which includes all my game props as well. Quick reminder that we have a Super Bowl to Super Bowl special available right now at wagertalk.com, but you don't have to wait a week and a half for now to start. If you get on board now, you get the next week and a half for free because it is all sports from this Super Bowl till next year's Super Bowl. So yes, that's a full, full year of college and pro football, college and pro basketball, Major League Baseball, but you get the next week plus for free when you sign up in advance. So why delay? It's an instant $800 discount. No promo code needed. Works out to just over $3 a day for all my best bets for the next year plus on my page right now, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. That includes those strong best bets I've got tonight on Wednesday. And don't forget also about the daily free plays as well. Daily free plays on my page every day, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. All right, let's get to a free play for you tonight on Wednesday. This game goes at 7 Eastern on ESPN2 National TV. Take a look at the Virginia Cavaliers, minus the 13 points at home against Notre Dame 
always like to take strong home court teams, solid teams, good defensive teams with revenge, and Virginia checks all those boxes tonight. And it's a fairly substantial revenge motive for the Cavaliers as they were embarrassed at Notre Dame a month ago. In fact, it was just over a month ago, December 30th. They go into Notre Dame as a 10-point road favorite last month, and they get blown out by 22 points, a 76-54 to loss. And there was nothing misleading about it. They were thoroughly outplayed, but they weren't necessarily outplayed. They were outshot. And shooting can be so random on a one-game one basis, especially for road teams. And we know Virginia has had some bad shooting outings over the years when they lost as a 1 versus 16 seed, and they came back the very next year and won the national title. Um, and that's what happens with these slow-down half-court teams. Notre Dame also relies heavily on the three-point shot. They're a slow-down half-court team as well. But they're one of the 30 worst offensive teams in all of college basketball this year. Yet somehow they managed to shoot 51% from the field, 48% from three-point range in that upset win against Virginia, who's still one of the better half-court defensive teams year in and year out under head coach Bennett. I don't look for that Abinale to return tonight on the road, especially in a hostile environment. It's a great revenge spot, and Virginia is worth a look, minus 13. Just to put the last game in perspective, Notre Dame was plus 27 points from three-point range, and they won by 22. That's not going to happen again tonight on the road and the Virginia Cavaliers get their revenge on a strong home court where they're a perfect 11 and 0 straight up this season. Nice role reversal here. And don't forget since that upset win against Virginia a month ago, Notre Dame has gone one and six straight up their last seven games. I look for another loss tonight. Take a look at the Virginia Cavaliers minus 13. That's on ESPN two at seven Eastern tonight on Wednesday. And once again, if you want my strongest personal best bets tonight, they're available $25 per play on my page, wagertalk.com. Multi-packs are available for 29 or the best deal. Every play, every sport, every day for the next year plus for just over $3 a day. That works out to just over a dollar a play with the Super Bowl to Super Bowl special. But you don't have to wait until next week to sign up. Sign up now and you get the next week and a half included for free. No promo code needed. Check it out on my page along with daily free plays. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. Today's best bet. We're going to go to ACC action. Wake Forest at Pittsburgh. Game opens Wake minus 1, 143. Currently, Pitt in a switch of favorites becomes a two point favorite. Total stays the same at 143. See a couple of stray 143 and a halves out there. For Wake Forest, it's been a long time since they last played a game. Lengthy layoff here. They've had nine days off since losing to Carolina, 85 to 64 in Chapel Hill. It was an uncharacteristically poor shooting night for Wake Forest. They went three for 20 from beyond the arc, 15% in that game. They're the second best three-point shooting team in the ACC and 23rd in the entire nation. I I feel like even with this long layoff, even with the road venue, I'm expecting to bounce back out of the Wake Forest shooting here. A couple of reasons why that we'll get to, but let's look at these offense-defense matchups. And again, we're going to focus in on the three-point arc. Because Pitt kind of hangs their hat um, as far as percentage of points scored. They do their most of their damage from three. They're dependent on it. I think they scored the 37th most in the nation per game from three. And, of course, Wake Forest, a really good shooting team. Um, Pitt's three-point defense, if you just look at the surface, you're going to see a number that looks very, very strong against the three-pointer. However, again, into ACC play. That's totally turned around. 15-team league. The Panthers ranked 12th at defending the three inside league play. So again, overall numbers, league numbers. Um, I know you can twist them back and forth, but league numbers sometimes do change for a reason. And for Pittsburgh, the three-point defense just hasn't been as good against the ACC teams. They're allowing 37 and a half from beyond the arc. That's a big percentage to be allowing when you're going to play Wake Forest. And some of the reason why Pittsburgh is starting to give it up is they just give up a tremendous amount of attempts from three-point range. And if you have a team that can shoot them, they can do some damage. Wake Forest can shoot the three. So I think there'll be a little damage there done by Wake Forest. Um, For Pittsburgh, their three-point offensive numbers are extremely skewed by three games. In their last 12 games, they've had three times in those 12 where they shot 19.2% from three. 17.2% and 10%. Those three miserable marks will change your number in a heartbeat. You look at the other nine that Pittsburgh has played in this span of dozen games, and they shot the three between 35 and 50% in seven of those and above 30 in all nine. So I think that 
considering the fact that Wake does not play tremendously good three-point defense, you're going to see Pittsburgh do what they normally do, and that is shoot the three-pointer anywhere from 35% or better here. And again, they're semi-dependent upon it. I, I shouldn't even say semi. They're a lot dependent upon getting points from three-point range. This is a defense where they can get those. I think there's some value in this number, 143, the total. But Pittsburgh at home is averaging 76.2 points per game. And in conference play, despite those a couple of those clunkers that I talked about from three-point range that they put up this year, a couple of those came in conference play. Despite that, in ACC games, their games are averaging 141.1, just two points underneath what we have to lay tonight to get over or to push the total. They need three more to get over. Um, but again, when you can do that with a couple of really, really bad efforts thrown in there, to me, that seems pretty strong. Wake Forest games have gone over this number tonight, 143, eight of the last 10. In their ACC games, their totals, their final score totals averaging 153.1. Their road games this year averaging 159.1. There's a lot of wiggle room with this 143 on the Wake Forest side and, and plenty of it, double digits worth. So I think there's good value in this number. And I think the last thing we want to note here about this game is the sizable amount of fouls that these teams commit. Wake Forest allows the second highest free throw rate in ACC play. The concern about that is Pittsburgh doesn't shoot them real well. Pittsburgh shoots number uh, 65% from the free throw line. That's 300th in the nation. They're going to get a lot of opportunities here if the numbers hold. They're going to have to make some of those in order to uh, help out their cause in this one. I think they will. I mean, I think they're going to get enough to where, you know, enough volume creates enough points in this instance. And, of course, Pittsburgh, eighth highest free throw rate in the league. But Wake Forest is just almost automatic from the free throw line, third best in the country. So whatever opportunities they get, feel like they'll convert in a close game as expected by the line maker here with a two point number uh, for the line, you would think that down the stretch, you'll get some free throws. Um, Wake's definitely good enough to cash in on theirs and hopefully pick gets enough chances. They should Wake Forest gives you a lot of opportunities. They got to cash in on enough. Um, I think there's going to be enough of those though. Like I say, in a close game where this 143 doesn't really come into play. I'm looking at this one to be about 146 or better. So we're going to use it for the best bet on the show today. Best bet. Wake Forest at Pittsburgh over 143. For our best bet today, uh, Wager Talk and uh, the college basketball show here, we're going to take a look at a couple teams that we haven't discussed so far this season. Chicago State's playing at Duquesne. If you follow college basketball, just a few years ago, Chicago State was simply horrendous. Uh, but they've gotten better and better. Problem is, right now, I think they're a little bit overrated. Uh, they've been one of the most inconsistent teams in college basketball this year. Uh, two three-game losing streaks, along with dropping six in a row once. Twice they've had four winning uh, games in a row, including the current run of the wrongs. They're riding a four-game winning streak into this contest. Uh, after facing the likes of East-West University and St. Xavier, I'm not sure this team's ready for Duquesne. Uh, this is a team who's played eight of ten games on the road lately, so they're a little bit tired. A little bit worn out, and they're stepping up in class tonight. Tonight's game at Duquesne is the only Chicago State basketball game in a 19-day stretch. So I'm not really sure Chicago State is going to be fully concentrating on this game. They've had a lot. You know how it is when you take vacations and you had a lot of time off in between. Last thing you want to do is go back to work. This might be a tough situation here for Chicago State. Uh, the Dukes of Duquesne, 11 and 8 on the season, just 2 and 5 in the Atlantic 10. This is a non conference game against the Independent Cougars. Uh, Duquesne dropped the first five conference games before back to back wins over St. Bonaventure and Fordham. Uh, they're coming into this with a little bit more confidence than what we would have seen about a week ago. This is also the third straight home game, which gives them a really distinct scheduling advantage here over tonight's opponent. One team playing 8 of 10 on the road. A rare game that they've had, one game in 19 days against a team who's in their third of three straight games at home. Really good scheduling situation here for Duquesne. We will lay it with the Dukes as our best bet here on Wednesday.